Welcome to another episode of CMA Live presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. And on tonight's show, it's an entire episode dedicated to motorcycle audio and all the latest offerings and expert advice from the foremost specialists. We've got representatives from five major brands within the motorcycle audio segment joining us, including Rockford Fosgate, Arc Audio, Focal, Metra, and Kicker. This is CMA Live presented by Sirius XM. The motorcycle episode starts now. There's never been a better time to have Sirius XM with even more exclusive content, like over 140 channels in your vehicle, including the widest, deepest variety of music, ad-free. Root for your team, get news, listen to whatever makes you laugh, and hear all about your favorite stars. Your all-access trial includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free, personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels filled with music and enjoy a favorite shows with Sirius XM Video. Thousands of hours of shows and performances on demand. What you love is on now. So as you can see, I'm broadcasting you to from our brand new studio. It's a real fancy studio right behind me here. And uh, I want to give a shout out to our team that really did a good job and trying to up the ante a little bit with, uh, you know, a better production quality because we want you guys to have a great time. This is all about infotainment, you know, getting your learn on and, uh, you know, having a good time along the way. So like I said at the top of the show, this episode is all about motorcycle audio. And we're taking advantage, of course, of the timing. Here we are in the spring. We're late April. And, uh, you know, the toys are coming out of storage for those of us in Canada, of course. Of course, if you're tuning in from more of the southern states, well, that might not be the case. And we don't like you very much right now. But our Canadian audience understands that, you know, the springtime means it's toy time and uh, Harley Davidson and, and those type of motorcycles have certainly taken up a lot of space in the aftermarket mobile audio segment. Um, so we felt that absolutely we had to put a show together to let dealers like you who are tuning in right now know what are the different options that are available out there for you. And if you're thinking about getting into it and thinking about maybe, you know, offering that service to motorcycle enthusiasts, well, I'm surprised after watching tonight's show, just how many great options products, technology, solutions that are available right now for you to consider. Um, so we've got five guests. We're going to start off with our, our first one, which uh, I must say not only is a heritage brand when it comes to car audio and mobile audio, in fact, but also, uh, you know, one that really helped pave the way for the segment, uh, and that is motorcycle audio. And of course, I'm referring to Rockford Fosgate, distributed in Canada exclusively through automobility, of course. Um, but I'm going to welcome back to CMA Live, their senior digital strategist, Mr. Eric Russell, who's joined me on many occasions. And introducing somebody new from Team Rockford is Jerry Pitts, who is their regional sales manager. I'm really hoping that he can help solve the equation a little bit on how to get dealers more excited into selling motorcycle audio. Welcome to CMA Live, guys. Ben, Thanks. it's great to be back with you. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it. Uh, Eric. I don't know how many times we've done this, but it feels like I, I get to, we have a date every week at this point, but uh, thank you so much for coming back. You bring no, a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> Absolutely cool. Um, let's get right into it. Rockford Fosgate, motorcycle audio, they go hand in hand. You guys have been doing it for a long time, but um, you know, like I always like to say, we like to get our learn on. We want to get educated on what the, you know, the specific things about this segment um, make it unique and it has its own challenges. And um, I'd love to hear a little bit about, you know, what type of motorcycles are we talking about? Are we talking about speed bikes, scooters, or are we talking about specific type of models? Well, traditionally, you're looking at uh, a touring motorcycle. And the most popular on the market is the Harley Davidson touring uh, bike. So you want to look for motorcycles that have fairings, saddlebags, 
So any sort of street glide that has a bat wing fairing, any sort of road glide that has a shark nose fairing, or like a road king, it may not have a fairing, but it does have hard shell saddlebags. So you really wanna look at those, that market segment, that is the touring segment. So these customers go on long trips with their motorcycle. Uh-huh. So they're all gonna be on the road for a very long time and they want some music to enjoy that ride with. Um, no doubt, because I have heard these cruising type motorcycles on the highway and in the parking lots for sure. And they do, I mean, let's, let's, let, let's, just call it what it is, you know, the bike in itself with its exhaust system is not exactly incognito to begin with. So I have a feeling that this is a type of customer that certainly enjoys being seen and heard. Definitely. Um, and a lot of the customers, you might find that the volume is either on or off. So uh, it's usually <laughs> either off and when it's in the garage and then full blast when they're riding. So really when you're looking for a motorcycle audio component system, that's gonna provide a lot of performance. You wanna look at something that's keyed to fit Harley Davidson. So uh, Rockford Fosgate makes a lot of our component kits and our complete plug and play kits that are keyed to fit. So this actually is ready to drop right into uh, a Batwing fairing. So you just take the old speaker out, put the new one in and you're pretty much ready to rock. Okay, so we're talking about very application specific type stuff. This is not like a universal type fitment um, type product. Right, so you you wanna look at the application, right? So motorcycle is an outdoor type of environment. You don't have acoustics inside, so you, you wanna look at what you're dealing with. And of course, when you're dealing with a, a motorcycle or in, like a Jeep, anything outdoors, you wanna look at something that's gonna protect. So you wanna look at a product that's like element ready, something that can withstand water, dirt, dust, and hard UV rays without deteriorating anything because they're gonna be out on the road. Again, these are touring motorcycles. So they're gonna be on the road for hours at a time. So you wanna be able to uh, utilize a product that's gonna be able to withstand the environment. So you're talking about environment. I heard UV rays, weather protect, weatherproofing. Does weight come into play at all? Absolutely. So uh, I've got an example here. So this is a typical car audio six by nine. And this is a purpose built uh, six by nine for Harley Davidson, keyed specifically to fit. So this car audio speaker is 5.4 pounds or uh, 2.44 kilograms, or this is a little over one pound or 0.5 kilograms. Oh. So notice the difference. You've got a ferrite ceramic magnet on this and you have a neodymium, a very, very compact magnet on this one. So when you're opening and closing the saddlebag, you wanna make sure that weight is a, a priority. So the interesting thing is, even though these are both six by nines, they both handle 100 watts of power. So you can get the same performance out of a a purpose-built speaker that's specifically designed with weight in mind. Okay, so we talked about weight, we talked about weatherproofing, we talked about UV, because like you said, these bikes are gonna be outside all the time. Now, my personal experience, uh, oh, are those the front speakers? Is there anything we need to know about that that's special as well? Yeah, so we want to also look at sensitivity, right? So uh, oh. electrical power on a motorcycle, you want to be very conservative with it. You want to treat every watt that you can get out of it as precious. So you want to make sure that you're using speakers that are high sensitivity. So these are uh, you know, the same size speaker. This is a car audio driver. And in the other hand, I have a purpose-built Harley-Davidson speaker. Again, same type of concept, uh, ceramic ferrite magnet, but this one has a neodymium magnet. So our audio speaker has an 87 dB sensitivity. The high performance TMS speaker has a 91 dB sensitivity. So that, that's at one watt, one meter. So that's the lower rating between the two. So you can really effectively convert that amplifier power into acoustical output uh, with the TMS type speaker, something that has a very, very high sensitivity. So you figure that's 4 dB difference between these speakers. So if you think about it, 3 dB requires what? Double the cone area or double the applied power. So you're getting a lot more efficiency with a high sensitivity driver. All right, so efficiency. So really what you're telling me is these are not just car audio speakers rebranded for Harley Davidson application. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not, yeah. So what's interesting is because we are dealing with an outdoor environment, Um, You really want to tailor the acoustics to the environment. Now, typically a car audio speaker, right? You have it inside an automobile. You have acoustic 
uh, you know, reverberations in the environment itself. Um, so you can, you can afford to get a flat frequency response out of a car audio driver. When you're dealing with a motorcycle, you're dealing with an outdoor environment. So we custom tailor the frequency response of our drivers so that it actually takes advantage. You have road noise, wind noise, tire noise, exhaust noise. I mean, there's a lot of environmental noise, well up to 110 dB uh, affecting your ride. So great when you're under 35 miles an hour or when you're in the parking lot, but what happens when you're above 35 miles an hour, like on the highway, riding at 70, 75 miles an hour? You wanna be able to actually hear the audio. And that's the number one complaint that we hear of owners with touring motorcycles is that actually can't hear their audio from the factory system uh, when they are, you know, are on the highway. So we tailor the frequency response of these so that the tweeter is more prevalent and it, you can actually hear all the audio all the time at any speed. I see, and there's the graphic of what you're trying to describe right there as far as the electrical response. Right, so this is the response of uh, the factory source unit. So that leads us into the next topic, which is uh, integration. So when you integrate into a factory audio system, uh, you have to deal with uh, that EQ curve. So on factory Harley-Davidson radios, there are about 15 different curves, but that's the most prevalent one. And you can see there was a really high output, about a 28 dB at 100 Hertz. So again, for low powered systems, that should be fine because you can afford to do that type of boost. But when you're putting a high performance aftermarket audio system on it, you really need to flatten that curve because if you don't, you're gonna wind up blowing up speakers. And that's definitely not what you wanna do. <laughs> definitely not. So. For 2014 and newer motorcycles, uh, that is the challenge that you're gonna have. If you're working with a customer that has a 1998 to 2013 model, you don't have to worry about that because that EQ is not built into the radio. So what it requires is a flash. So we partnered with a company called Techno Research and this is their flashing hardware. And this allows you to read into the factory CAN bus system of the Harley Davidson audio and flatten that curve. So it actually puts it down to where it should be. And then you've got a nice clean canvas to build your system on. Okay, hold on, just so I understand, because I'm coming from the car audio world. You're talking about reprogramming the original factory radio to have a different output. Is that what that does? Yes. It's actually just flat the curve. There are options available from Techno Research. Rockford Fosgate, we made our own curve that flattens okay. that uh, that acoustical or that electrical output, excuse me. And that way you have a good clean audio signal, flatter frequency response than before going into your higher output uh, amplification system. So yes, you are reprogramming the radio, but it's a very, very specialized uh, program. And now is that an item as a shop that you just need to buy once and kind of use it as a tool or is that something that needs to stay in the in the vehicle? No, so you can, um, Automobility has them available for purchase or rent. You can rent them for a job that you need. Um, so either or, if you're doing tons of Harleys, I would recommend purchasing one. Yes, it's a upfront expense, but you're gonna need it in the long run um, if you're doing lots of Harleys day in and day out. So it'll just make your life easier to have one on you. Very, very cool. Well, thank you for the product information. I'm going to switch the conversation up a little bit because I promised our viewers two things. I promised them some information on the latest and greatest products as far as brands that they're presenting tonight. But I also wanted to pick your brain. Um, and Jerry, from what I understand, you, you have a, a passion for, for motorcycles and for motorcycle audio, of course. Uh, we have dealers tuning in that potentially might not have gotten into motorcycle audio yet. I'd like to hear what you have or what message you may have for them if they're thinking about it and want to take the plunge. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think if you're still hesitant now, this is the time to jump both feet in, right? Um, motorcycle audio is probably one of Rockford's top growth categories out of all of the different categories that we're in. Um, so it's no time like the present to get into it. So a couple of key points I have of advice would be Get with a trusted partner in the motorcycle category, partner up with one, learn their product inside and out. Um, so that way, when you're talking to a customer, you know exactly what you're talking about. Harley customers can pick you apart kind of if you know the realm of motorcycles or not. So definitely learn, learn the product that you're trying to sell. 
um, Rockford. We have great installation videos that Eric actually produced um, on our YouTube channel a few years back when we introduced our kits. Um, we have great sales training programs for our motorcycle product. Um, and we also have compatibility charts on our website of what our kits will fit from 90 to 13 to 14 and up. Um, so if you're, if you're trying to pitch someone, you're kind of confused, you just log right on to rockforfosgate.com and we have the compatibility chart. Okay, this will work with a 14 and up CVO or won't. So um, that's kind of the upfront part of it. Um, definitely learn the language of the motorcycle consumer. They're a tight knit group. They all talk. Um, like I said earlier, they can kind of pick you apart, but know the difference between a road glide, a street glide, um, ultra classics, what, what's in a CVO, how the bag lids are different from six by nine to five by sevens. Um, that way you can help tailor that customer to the correct product that they need. Um, so that's kind of the upfront part of it. Um, when you're talking marketing and getting out there and brand exposure to your retail storefront, check out local bike nights. Um, there's a lot of guys in the States um, down here that will go to local bike nights, set up a booth, try to sell product um, and just meet new customers. Um, it's a great way to reach out to consumers that you might not have ever talked to before. Um, another big one is bike rallies. Um, a lot of dealers sell tons of product there, installs right on the spot. Um, motorcycle audio is more prevalent than ever now with that consumer base where they're actually knowing Okay, hey, Rockford Fosgate, I know you do all this. Where can I get it? So it's a lot easier to sell um, motorcycle audio now than what it was four or five years ago. And let's be honest, the catalog is much more diverse. The offering is much wider, right? You guys have done the research. You, you, I mean, if you go look at the catalog, go check out Rockford Fosgate's website. There's tons of great examples. You, you referenced the YouTube channel, tons of great video as well on different builds that you guys have done. If you're watching this, make sure if you're interested in Rockford Fosgate in Canada, I'm going to you know, plug it one more time. It's Auto Mobility that is the distributor for Rockford Fosgate. Uh, make sure you check that out. Um, give them a call and uh, get your Rockford on when it comes to the Harley Davidson stuff. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate it, Ben. Thank you. All right, we'll see you in a bit. So Rockford, uh, yeah, no stranger in the Harley world, obviously. And uh, I had mentioned their catalog. They've got a lot of stuff. Um, their know-how, um, you know, they've been doing it for quite some time. And I, I, I might even arguably say they're a little bit ahead of the curve in forecasting that trend, um, you know, before it even really exploded. And as you heard, you know, Jerry say, it is now is the time. If you're thinking about doing it, now is definitely the time. Um, our next brand and guest that's coming on uh, is coming from a different place. I mean, uh, this is a brand that's known to be, you know, big time in the in the competitive side of things, uh, high end competitions, uh, that type of stuff. And it's Arc Audio. And uh, you know, for those who don't know, Arc Audio has got some major skin in the game when it comes to um, motorcycle products. And if you know you have that customer that might want to look at something a little bit harder, but with a, some engineering behind it, that's certainly what they like to promote. And I'm sure my next guest can shed some light on that matter. Uh, his name is Fred Lynch, and he is, of course, returning again to CMA, Director of Sales and Marketing for Arc Audio. What's oh from the garage, Fred? What's going on? What's up, Ben? Yeah, we're uh, we had to do a little working from home today to take care of the misses this morning. So uh, you know we're uh, doing the thing and making sure we adapt to the conditions of what we need to do. So you know what, we totally appreciate well, you for it, and thank you for the effort, and thank you for being here because we honestly could not do a, a bike episode without Arc Audio involved, right? <laughs> and I appreciate that. And by the way, I love the new office too. So. Yeah, yeah, good. Yes, you like that, huh? It's so real, I swear. Love it's it. all there, you know, and it's daytime outside. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> um, I, I, I kind of mentioned, you know, Arc Audio, I feel a bit of a, uh, the best term I could use is a little bit of a dark horse in the category because it, you know, it might not have this huge marketing campaign behind it, but I know there's this huge following because I hear from the dealers that install the stuff. Um, you know, of course, Arc Audio, Canadian dealers tuning in, you want to definitely give Import Tell a call. They got all your ARC audio needs uh, taken care of. Um, give us a little bit about the history of ARC in the motorcycle market. You know, so ARC audio actually got back into the motorcycle market back in about 2008, 2009 is when we first came in and really got oh. hard in 2010. Uh, we hit up rallies like Sturgis, uh, Laconia, uh, Reno Bike Week. I mean, 
the other guys hit it on the money. There's a huge amount of business out there, and the motorcycle market's great because these guys are all about customizing their bikes. They're all about tailoring it to what their specific likings and needs. And there's so many different product offerings out there, not just in audio, but in other products that makes us a really attractive market for the accessory market and the customization market. So, you know, we took a little bit of a different angle on it. At first, we started out with a lot of different products. And we've actually narrowed down that product line now simply because of the fact that we've been able to figure out that you can make less products go over a pro you know, across a bigger platform. And that way, it's less capital and in inventory. You're getting better performance. You can focus and put more dollars into the actual product itself as far as engineering goes. And it allows us to keep that plug and play solution available, but with products that we can call our own. You know, when I when I do research on Arc Audio in, in, in motorcycles, um, a lot of the conversation from the Arc Audio standpoint is uh, how proud you are of your amplifier design. There's a lot, you know, a lot yeah, of brands so, talk about the speaker. <laughs> of course, you're going to talk about speakers, but I want to hear a little bit about why you, know, you, you guys love talking about your amplifier design. So, you know, of course, one of the big things with Arc Audio is we do 100% of all of our own engineering, especially in our amplifiers. We have Robert Zeff and his wonderful team up at Nicole Engineering, who's been our exclusive lead engineer since we were first, uh, you know, brought into this industry, as well as the car audio industry since about 1997 is when we first came out and showed some things. We had our first CES in, 2000, in 2000, I'm sorry, 1998. And... Um, the amplifiers for us, I mean, we do all of our own designs. We deal with a lot of unique technology built into our amplifiers, and we follow a little bit more of a true to the blue power rating system on there. We don't, you know, try to make our numbers look higher than what they really are by getting creative and going out of the box with uh, these non standardized power tests that people will, hey, I get a bigger number out of it. But in reality, uh, it doesn't take much to look at the power number of an amplifier, look at the fusing, and go that mathematically, that's just not possible. Um, our numbers are true. We do all of our own engineering design about reliability and performance, but compact performance. But one of the big things for us, of course, is efficiency and making sure that we're giving the best sound quality possible out of it, as well as loud performance that these guys were looking for to get over these loud bikes. And it's simply because of the fact that we have to make sure that these amplifiers, well, don't kill the charging systems on these bikes as well. I was just going to say, because, you know, I've seen a couple of your pro arc audio demo vehicles and there's like, you know, 16 lithium batteries in there. And I'm wondering myself, that's not going to happen to a Harley guy. Like they got a battery this big. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so when you deal with efficiency, uh, you know, and you can put amplifiers in there, but, you know, you go back, you know, 15, 20 years, a lot of amplifiers were into that 60 and 70 percent market. And Class D technology, of course, has gotten better and better and better. All of our products that we offer in the motorcycle market are well above the 90% efficiency market. So you're getting more power connected through the amplifier, less in the form of heat, and it's a less of a demand and less of a draw off the charging system of the bike. As a result, you don't see people taking out stators and things like that, and you don't have to have a, have a big of a reserve battery in there to operate any of our plug and play solutions or even our standalone solutions on customized applications. Very nice, very nice. Um, you said a key term at the top of our little chat here. You said plug and play. So talk to me how plug and play Arc Audio's kits are. So we designed all of our plug and play solutions specifically for our amplifiers. And the idea is, is you know, there there has been a few other companies prior to us that were doing, you know, cut this wire, put in this T harness there, T harness there, and of course some people were having issues with the warranties on the bikes. Um, one thing is, is we use all the factory OEM connections. We don't do any cutting, modifying, soldering, no T-taps, no nothing like that. Nothing is going in line between that radio and the factory electronics. So there's no way that they can plug in over the digital bus system and detect it and cause any kind of alarm for it. We actually developed it with a whole series of uh, Harley-Davidson Harley dealers and technicians across the United States to say, if this guy rolled in, are you going to void his warranty? And that's a huge with the cost of what they're spending on these bikes, that's a huge value for uh, for our customers. So making sure that we can plug it in, connect up to the amplifier with a couple connections on there, and you're off and rolling is exactly what Arc Audio is all about. But it's about giving you that performance, that sound, and at a value that honestly we tell everybody, users, and you're going to hear the difference versus the competition. Okay, so very plug and play, uh, no weird splices or tap ins or anything like that. So, um, would you also say that it's pretty relatively easy to remove? Should you want to change it from one bike to another? 
Uh, actually, as long as it's within the compatible spectrum uh, from 1999 mm -hmm. all the way up to 2013 or 2014 and up, whether it's a street glide or a road glide, um, our wire harness kits come compatible for both bikes. So when you get the kits, oh. you have everything you need to go into either the road glide or the street glide versions of the bikes. And then, of course, then we offer all the information to get into some of the more elevated systems. And we're continually now getting ready to offer more and more solutions to add in for some of these more advanced systems, as well as more of the customized systems that these guys want for these big bike systems that just aren't plug and play as well. All right. Very well said. Thank you, Fred. Um, I got to get into the speakers because that's obviously an important part when it comes to uh, motorcycle audio. It's got to be loud. It's got to be clear. And I, I know every manufacturer has their own take on it. How does uh, what does Arc do as far as the offering? And is there a different type of offering depending on the type of sound you're looking for? So we've simplified our offering um, just simply from demand and marketing research with our dealers. Uh, you know, we do have plug and play solutions uh, as far as that drop directly into it. All of our speakers, like for example, this is our new Moto CX-6. Um, all of our speakers are designed specifically for the motorcycle market. They're designed for that environmental action, ultraviolet rays, moisture, heat, humidity, sunlight. I mean, you name it. These things are designed to give you the, to give you the reliability that you need over a longer term. It's a sealed design, so that way you can have everything you need in there. You can do either the, the, you know, the coaxial design or you can do our Moto 602 HD. And yes, we're not doing neodymium magnets on here, partially because of the fact of certain things that people have seen thermally as well as also sonically. And honestly, when we were doing some market research, people were giving us feedback on there and they weren't actually worried about a couple of pounds up there. These things are actually really lightweight compared to some of the larger format car audio drivers, but we wanna make sure it's about performance and sound. We're not gonna compromise that and, and at the risk of reliability. We want people to enjoy it and actually have music just like if they were listening to that live rock concert and performance. While cruising down the highway on the hog. And you gotta be able to hear it at 65, 70, while well, some of these guys 90 miles an yeah. hour. Um, and if the speakers can't take it, you're just not gonna hear it. Now, what would you recommend between the, like how do you sell somebody, you know, the regular, uh, coaxial versus a horn is it a price thing or is it a perform like what is the differential you know um like i say with these speakers efficiency is something that's key there's a little bit of a difference in difference between efficiency of a horn loaded driver versus a coaxial uh all of our speakers that we offer currently right now on the motorcycle lineup are all in excess of 91 to 93 db average so you're getting more output per watt on them uh, it just depends on what style sound. If you're looking for a musical sound that you want high output, you do something like the Moto CX-6. If you want something that's really in your face, that uh, that basic, uh, you know, you're not looking for that basic sound, uh, you go to the Moto 602 HD. Really just depends on the preference of what you like. A lot of guys, they're out there on the road. All they know is volume up. And when you're designing speakers for these things, they got to handle the elements, but they also got to handle the, the listener too. Uh, I'm going to ask the three little letters because I don't think I've ever had a conversation with you yet if I didn't mention DSP. Is there DSP for, <laughs> for bikes? Does that even exist? Yes, it does. So we have a unit called the PSM, and uh, we're still actively working on some additional uh, offerings in that product category that people are going to love here in the near future. But uh, what we do is we offer a plug-and-play solution that you can plug in post-radio, and versus flashing the radio, which, uh, you know, if you ever go into a, take a bike in for warranty or service, in a lot of cases, they'll reflash the radio and you can sometimes lose that preset or lose that counter tune. We offer a solution that uses the factory tune. We counter tune off of that. And then you can still plug in and actually customize and tailor the tune to your specific needs on how the listener wants to listen to the music as well. And we've got some great technology coming up here in the future that's going to use similar technology to where it does flash and wipe out, but it leaves it active in a state to where um, it, everything communicates between the radio and our DSP, just like it's one integral entity, just like the factory amplifier and the factory head unit does. That technology is very, very shortly down the road on there, and that's definitely gonna be a, something that's gonna be a go-to item for a lot of dealers without modules and third-party devices needed. Mm-hmm, and when you say coming down, is this this year or next year? Can you tell us? It's going very, very fast, and that's what I'm going to say right now. It's a very high priority <laughs> okay, item. Okay, come on, you can't blame me for trying, Fred. Um, you know, well, you can try. <laughs> what about 
I'm trying. I always going to try. Uh, you know, you you mentioned warranty and and cust and being customer friendly. Um, what, what features does Arc Audio's lineup uh, lend itself to when it comes to warranties and feature and customer being customer friendly for that matter? You know, we've seen a lot of different kits out there in the market, and one thing that we're really focusing on is making sure that we're not requiring uh, modification of the structures. Uh, brackets that involve removing partial structures of the of the front of the uh, of the bike, um, or, you know, the cutting, no, you know, no t-tapping, no soldering. The factory harness stays intact. The biggest thing is we're trying to make sure that whatever the customer has to do, the worst case is they take off the fairing. The yes, they have to pull the fuel tank to run power cables back to the battery. But we want to make sure that the factory structure of the bike stays 100% intact, and it doesn't require any of those additional added, um, some people call it features, but if you look at it and you ever have a customer that goes in and they have an accident, um, and we have seen this with a couple other brand products where they have a bracket that involves removing the factory bracket or component or modifying something up front via bolt-in assemblies, and next thing you know, Harley's like, that's not our design. We can't guarantee that the structure of the front end of this bike was gonna stay together. So we make sure everything we do is designed to where it keeps the structural and electrical integrity of the bike intact, and it keeps it within parameters that are, uh, well, not necessarily arguable um, by the dealers once it's laid out on, on a silver platter in front of them, which is exactly why we worked with the Harley dealers in order to make sure that we get their feedback on those designs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, before I let you go, Fred, I gotta pick your brain. I gotta squeeze it out of you. you know, there's again I'm gonna, every single guest tonight will be asked this question and i'd like to hear your take on uh, what message you have for dealers tuning in who might not have dove in you know to the motorcycle category yet because obviously it seems um like you should be you know for any dealer that hasn't dove into this category this is a huge market and not only is it a huge market it is a market where there's a lot of money spent uh, you figure a lot of these guys, if they're buying new bikes, they're spending anywhere from you know twenty five thousand up to fifty thousand dollars on a bike. And from some of the surveys that we did up at at Sturgis a couple of years, most of these spend in you know thirty five to fifty k on these bike on these higher model bikes, and they're spending another thirty to fifty k on accessories and customization. Wow. So we're talking a hundred grand rolling down the road. Um, in most cases, they're not looking for the cheapest thing out there. They're looking for quality. They're looking for performance. They want what's new. And a lot of them are the coolest guys in the world out there. But it's easy to do the installs. It's easy to make money. It's easy to be able to get that, um, to get that customer in there. Go out to the bike rallies. Go out to the local bike shows. Get yourself involved with the motorcycle market. You're going to find out not only does word of mouth travel significantly faster in the motorcycle market, it does the ability for customer retention and repeat for customers because some of these guys swap through bikes all the time is extremely high and much, much higher than what you would see in the car audio market. Interesting. I did not know that. Very, very well said. Uh, Fred, thank you so much. Hey, if you're tuning in, you're watching Fred, and you're like, mm, I like what this young man is talking about. I want that on my bike. And you're in Canada. Make sure you give Import Telecall, who, of course, is your Canadian exclusive distributor for ARC Audio. Thank you so much, Fred. Definitely, Ben. Thank you. All right. Two very different brands uh, with different type of offerings. But nonetheless, if this isn't get you, getting you fired up to take a closer look at the motorcycle category, I can tell you firsthand the growth that I have witnessed within the category just from product offering and what I'm seeing online. Um, I'm, I'm seeing these brands show up at, you know, like Sturgis and all these big uh, motorcycle meets. There is a certain culture that you need to tap into. Um, and on that note, we're going to introduce another brand, which certainly has, I mean, they have veins tapped right into this. It's a very popular brand, excuse me, amongst Harley Davidson owners. Uh, and, and, you know, to a certain extent, they're quite proud when they have uh, these products installed. Uh, they, they look great. We went in depth with it on, on, on several occasions. But I want Justin Bond from BB Distribution and Focal Canada to come on and talk about the Focal offering for Harley Davidson because we know Focal takes HD kind of seriously. Yeah. Hey, Ben. Uh, thank you for having me again. Spending some time. You know you have a I. permanent. I you know you have a permanent spot here. You got a permanent spot here. Yeah, I only well, rent I your spot out when you're not around. Today too. Yeah, I was gonna wear my serious <laughs> hat from Ricky. So. 
Wait, wait, wait. He's sending uh, yeah, them to everybody I'll... now? Jeez. I, thought I think he has a couple one. select in mind. No. <laughs> I mean, they're nice. Good snap. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. So Harley Davidson and us. Um, we're, we're a bit different than uh, the, the other companies, a lot of them that you'll see tonight. You know, I mean, a lot of these companies do something very great, uh, great for the scene, great for the industry, their heritage brands, uh, this too. Um, for us, when it came down to Harley Davidson, you know, we in the United States have been using our yellow cone K2 power speaker kind of in Harley bikes for a long time. Um, we'll talk a little bit later about that, but we didn't really have a dedicated a Harley solution. Um, and then with the launching and the rebranding of the whole entire Focal Inside series, um, there was a lot of push on on France or, or, or headquarters, home base, I guess, if you will, um, to develop a solution tailor-made for Harley Davidson. Um, being that the bike market in the United States and Canada is so much greater than you would see over in Europe, especially with Harley, um, it was a really big push by uh, the the by Focal in the United States and Focal Canada to develop these products. Um, and then the unique thing about this for us is yes, it is a completely redesigned speaker, but Focal being Focal, uh, branded in heritage, tradition, materials, and technology, um, just to build something to build something while sacrificing or giving up their ideologies is not an option. Um, so, I mean, that being said, when it comes down to Harley Davidson, our offerings are probably a lot, lot, lot less than a lot of other companies, but, um, you know, we, we feel we cover a very certain, um, a, a large part of the market with Harley and motorcycle speakers. Um, and we do it extremely well and we keep our core values at the same time. So that's what I wanted to make sure we identify here, you know, because when I first heard that Focal was making Harley Davidson speakers, I was like, man, do they even ride Harley Davidson in France? So now you've explained it to me. It was a North American initiative. I said, guys, you know, this is a, a market we got to get into. But and, and, and you know, I know we're going to get into this because I don't think we ever have a Focal conversation for not talk about, you know, technology and the materials and all that type mm -hmm. of stuff. So let's get into that. You know, yeah. you mentioned cone materials. Is there a sacrifice? Is there a different type of, you know, uh, ideology so, behind these speakers? Or is this literally, you know, DNA passed on to another application? Yeah, so so sacrifice is none, but where the sacrifice comes in is into the amount of speakers or amount of offerings that we can provide. Um, you know, being that we use uh, select materials depending on a certain price point or entry level or sound requirement for our speakers, uh, they, they don't all make it into something that could be considered, you know, weather resistant or, you know, uh, safe for, for, for elements, water, rain, heat, etc. So that being said, we kind of went with two of a lot of our core uh, cones that, uh, that are out there. Uh, the first one is kind of our, it's what we call our access cone or our DFS cone. Um, this is from our access series speaker. Uh, this is a dual fiberglass structure co cone. So it's a, it's a, it's a bi-weaved fiberglass. Um, and by using that in this speaker, you know, it makes the speaker extremely resistant to heat, water, humidity, dust, et cetera. Anything that you can throw at it is one of the most weather resistant materials, right? So Justin, um, and just to be clear, is, yes, just, just to be clear, the one, the first one you picked up there, that's part of the Focal inside or are both Yep, speakers part of the Focal Inside line. I just wanted to clarify. So both that. of these are part of Focal Inside. The way that we offer our okay. Harley speakers is we have two series and four models. Okay, so we have gotcha. our Access series, which is our um, I don't I would say our entry into our, our into to the Harley Davidson model, and we offer it in a 1998 to 2013 version that includes the grills. And typically, those bikes are a five and a quarter. We only make a six and a half. Um, with that, we include the, the the adapter ring for that in certain situations, um, and then we make a fourteen uh, or sorry, yeah, a two thousand fourteen and up. So ninety eight to thirteen and two thousand fourteen and up, um, and then we and do those that are and the, span and it that's over for two access. Periods. Yep, and, the, and, the, and then the and same so tell for me about these our access speakers power. a little bit more. Yeah, let's, let's talk so, a little bit more about like these I access said, speakers. Yeah, so like I said, it it is not just um, our access speaker. 
uh, taken and slapped into a kit with some new grills. That's not the point of this. Um, if I hold this speaker up, you're going to notice that it's perfectly flat. So what we've done here is we started with a completely inverted sound. The reason we do that is so we can milk, obviously, as much space as possible out of that bike, get it as flush to the top as, uh, as possible, also to provide any collecting water um, and have it run off. So between that and the completely redesigned compression tweeter that we use in it, um, it is geared for Harley Davidson. So like I said, we have, we've taken our access tweeter and the same thing, and then we redesign it so that it fits in emplacements inside the grill, almost like a set of components, but still you have a completely sealed face of the speaker, um, and it is a compression driver, right? So output is required, higher output is required. Uh, you hear all these guys saying, you know, you need to be able to hear the bike. Um, absolutely, I mean, there, there's no denying that. Well, what we believe is that you need to be able to hear the bike, um, and you, you want it to sound good as well. You know, we, we don't sacrifice anything on terms of sound quality or what we do uh, to fit a goal. Our goal has to be attained by meeting all that criteria, right? So that's what we've done okay. with kind of our going into Harley with access. What about those, uh, you know, the famous yellow cone K2 power speaker that everybody knows? Uh, have you like have you done something to them to make sure they're re resistant or weatherproof or whatever term you want to use? Um, nope. How does that work? <laughs> so... Uh, K2 power, uh, we use uh, on our cone, it's a sandwich material, so we sandwich a layer of Rosal foam in between one layer of glass fiber on the rear, and then on the front we use what's called an aramid fiber. Uh, also kind of has become synonymous with Kevlar. Uh, Kevlar is like Kleenex, it's a tissue paper, it's a name, right? Um, it's called an aramid fiber, it's yellow, it's manufactured by DuPont, um, and it's extremely resilient to water, to dust, to heat, pretty much anything extremely strong and you know it all comes down fundamentally back to the the three main criteria of a loudspeaker for vocal light well down and very rigid so k2 power in itself has always been one of our most dynamic lines and then when you combine it with the rigidity of that cone the strength of that cone and the weather resistance of it it makes it almost a no-brainer for an application like harley davidson and I have to say, it kind of looks a little sexy-ish when you see it through the grill, because I've seen that installed. Totally. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, <laughs> um, being that... No, go ahead. Being that this is a Made in France product, um, you know, and you're getting into that upper echelon, uh, the, that higher dollar range, um, that more demanding customer for sure, uh, it's it's exciting because you've heard the other guys talk about it, is, is you know, Harley-Davidson is a big dollar industry, and people aren't afraid to you know, spend money. But what we need to do for their money is get exactly what's being promised and be able to deliver. And, you know, when you look at our K2 Power Series Harley kit um, and you take a really close look at the speaker and you see the technology such as like our M profile tweeter, but now it's done into a compression dome. Um, and you have our TMD surround and our progressive spider, stuff that we have used to make these speakers almost flagship for over 40 years. Um, you know, no expense has been spared when it comes to Harley Davidson. Uh, yeah, it may be a Harley Davidson specific speaker, but it's Focal DNA through and through, 100%. Now, I know that you don't um, talk, or not talk, but I hear you talk about one amplifier the most when it comes to Focal line. And I see it there sitting there next to your shoulder, um, and I've seen it installed like, on different bikes. Yeah, yeah, it's small, but it packs a punch. Yeah, so this is a really, really cool, um, once again, like North American initiative uh, in the amplifier. This is what's called our FTP Sport. So that's this little boy right here. I mean, it's not very big. This is my iPhone right next to it, right? So it's small. It's also slanted on the top here, if you can kind of take a, a look, and that's done by purpose. So everything on this amplifier is done purposely. So it's got a four layer PCB, a dual rail power supply, and it's conformally coated. All right, so the conformal coating helps protect it against water, humidity, wetness, etc. elements. All right, it's a hard anodized aluminum finish uh, just for re resistance, a huge heat sink on it for heat dissipation. Um, but there's a couple other really cool features about this amplifier. Number one, you know, I talked to you about the slant, and that's specifically designed if you are mounting it on a 14 and up uh, road glide uh, above the radio, it has this 
slant here to conform and fit inside that original fairing. And then not only that, is that when it comes down to being, yes, this is a motorsports amplifier, um, it's also uh, designed for Harleys because when you purchase this amp inside the box, you get a six foot run of OSC power and ground, which is enough to run obviously from any fairing or any bag into the battery. And then you're also gonna get Harley specific Molex input and output connectors. All right, so you know my opinion on the word plug and play and I don't like to use it, but let's just say this is a very um, excellent OEM integration option. Okay, I do not want to devalue the tech there by saying plug and play um, or make it seem like anyone can do it. It is easy, it is not difficult to install, but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. some knowledge is required. Um, and yeah, I mean, this amp is tiny, you know, it's five inches by eight and a half inches, and it is a true thousand RMS amplifier, like actual power. Very nice. Whether it tucks in that's nice. going to hurt your bike a little bit because <laughs> you're running on a stator, yeah. and you know, that, that's to be said, but. The jam is there where you need this. You know, this can be bridged down to two by 500 or four or 450. Um, it really, really is an awesome, awesome amplifier. And I mean, it's going to give you all the features you come to expect from any Focal electronic. You're going to get all your protections. You're going to get reverse polarity protection, DC, you know, stuff like that. You're going to get the, this actually has a, the, uh, ability to change between balanced or unbalanced high level inputs depending on the situation as well providing auto turn on so it does really make it a versatile premium motorsports harley davidson amplifier and man this thing with these things jams okay well done <laughs> um thank you so much uh justin listen i'm gonna ask you the same question because dealers need to hear different perspectives you heard what the other guests have offered as far as um advice and i'm sure you agree with what they have to say i'd like to see what you can add to the mix as far as getting a dealer to say hey it's time this is the year i jump into you know offering some some bike services yeah i mean um i'm kind of lucky all these you know great other brands and these great guys are up here and, and all their advice is really awesome and and stuff but I, I'm lucky in the fact that I'm prevalent in the Canadian market and I've gotten to visit dealers in Canada and I understand the Canadian scene a little bit um, um, you know we don't have access to the larger rallies like Sturgis and, and and stuff like that it's just it's not here don't get me wrong bike nights uh, the you know bike nights is, is, is unbelievable it's a, it's a great way to market yourself but um, you know Har Har the Harley Davidson world's a show and tell world man and and I and and you know as a dealer I feel like you have nothing to do to lose by by jumping in and getting your hands on this, you know take your time do what you do make sure you do it well and and the word of mouth is going to help you huge advertising is always going to be great setting up booths going to shows going to events power sports shows Harley Davidson shows partnering with a Harley dealership you know do a bike on consignment say hey I want to put the stereo in a bike let's put it on the showroom. Um, you know, and then we'll, you know, we can 90 days, whatever, we'll do this when it sells, when it sells, it's a Focal edition, it's a blah, blah, blah edition, it's a your store name edition, you know what I mean? Brand yourself that way. And, uh, but the biggest thing is, man, it's, these guys like to spend money, they like, they like to play show and tell, plain and simple. So if you have something that delivers on all aspects, it's going to get noticed, you're going to get noticed, your shop's going to get noticed, and your business is going to grow. In other words, now's the time. Stop fussing around. The products are here. The support. Yeah. All these brands are here to support you, right? I mean, somebody calls you, Justin, yeah. need help. You know, what kit should I buy? I'm sure you can help steer them the right way. I have no doubt of that. You bet. You get a hold of me anytime uh, at BB Distribution. I'd love to help. That's it. So, full cal guys, and, uh, if you're a Canadian dealer, make sure you uh, give the folks at BB Distribution a call. They are your full cal Canada enterprise. And it looks like they've got a pretty premium offering for your Harley Davidson clients. Thanks so much for joining us once again, Justin. It's always a pleasure. Thanks, dude. All right. So we've 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 done some really cool products, amplifiers, speaker solutions, and all that type of stuff. Um, our next brand that we're going to bring up is so involved and has put so much effort into the whole motorcycle thing but it's not necessarily in you know electronics and speakers i shouldn't say electronics i mean amplifiers and speakers um metra electronics that's right metra the, the brand that you know 
that has so many different offerings. They take motorcycle super serious. They have a brand called Saddle Tramp. If you haven't heard about it, get to know it because they are a lot of integration solutions and they have something new that I, whether they, I'm not even sure if they've even announced it. Maybe they haven't announced it recently. So what I understand they new, but let's get them on and, and find out what's going on with Tim Shell, the sales representative for Metro Electronics. What's going on, Tim? Oh, really good. What? Okay, so I had a question that I was going to ask, and that was, uh, what is this new Harley kit that I, I heard about through the grapevine coming up from, from the Metro camp, and I see you've got something right there on the table. Wow, okay, so you're taking everything that you've known, when I say you, I mean Metro, of course, that has to do with plastics, and have now incorporated a full replacement, what is this called exactly? It's not a fairing, it's not a dash, what is the term? It would be either uh, a bezel or a fairing. You can still call it fairing, absolutely. Fairing, okay. V very, very cool. Um, this is set to come out very soon, I understand, or is it already available? Yeah, no, it's not. And you actually kind of touched on it just a little bit before you jumped on with me. So we, we haven't really announced it per se. We've stuck it out in a new catalog that we just gave you. Um, still hasn't quite made it out to everybody yet. And then we sneak the catalogs on the website a little bit before. But yeah, the product is not even, part number hasn't been quite loaded onto the website yet. So yeah, it's not really coming up as soon as either. So it's kind of a sneak little preview here, which is nice for you guys. Um, this would be really nice as far as being able to put a full double pin radio. So we already have the backing there. So this will be able to go into the those FLT models and be able to put a full double pin radio. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start off. I have a couple questions for you, Tim. Uh, I'm going to guess you're going to be able to upgrade the size of your speakers with this kit. Yes, absolutely. So it's factory five and a quarter inside of there. It uh, has a bunch of factory. So this will be able to allow you to go up to a six and a half. And then most importantly, I think guys are really like to be able to go all the way to a six by nine inside there. Uh, we have the six and a half inch plate right here. And then we have a template that's going to come with it. So if you wanted to do something custom or something separate, you'll need to have that as well. But uh, I don't have a 6 by 9 plate, but you won't be able to put a 6 by 9 inside of it. Very, very cool. And um, how is the fitment exactly? So it's, uh, it's really important to note that some other of the Chinese stuff you might see floating out there, if you actually go around the fairing itself where it meets the factory one, You'll see that there's some gaps and stuff like that, and we have, have this fitted patent in and then we also designed it right here in Florida, and uh, we have it on a bike. I really wish we would have had the other camera to show you guys, but the bike that's right on the other side of the curtain behind me uh, has it on there, and I look all the way around it, and it's almost like there's no gap at all, which is perfect because it just matches so perfectly to the always wear, and that's really important uh, to these Harley guys. They're very particular about their bikes. So we care the same way about that. We want to have the same characteristic and it works so we don't think it should be there. All right. Now, I noticed that the demo that you have in front of you is black, and it seems like a gloss black. Is it available in other colors, or is that meant to be painted, or what? how does that work? Sure, yeah, that's a great question. So the way that the bearing is right here in front of us is the way that it's only going to be available in front of this time. It's going to be a gloss black, which is going to go with just about anything. You can't really go wrong with that gloss black paint. However, the way that it sits right here is ready to be sent off to somebody else to be prepped and painted right over top of. You don't have to strip it down or try to sand it or anything. You just go right over top of what you see here. So if there is a guy that has a painted bike or special edition or something, they have to have it painted to match. You're more than welcome to send this off and just paint it. Now, this is a very unique product. I'm very intrigued by this product. I have to admit, um, this opens up a lot of options, you know, for a lot of uh, dealers out there to be able to offer something a little bit extra, above and beyond just replacement. Um, when can we expect this to be available uh, on the market? 
where, yeah, the, the, what I was given was it's supposed to be late summer, and we kind of joked around before about it, but it's not. Uh, we're going to count this as a late Florida summer, uh, so really, probably realistically, from everyone else, you can probably expect the fall, but yeah, it'll, we're going to call it late summer in this time. Okay, very, very, very cool. And just to repeat, you did mention that fits a double DIN radio with this kit. Yeah, yeah, and I clarified this earlier. It's a full double DIN radio. So a lot of these other okay, ones cool. have, have an L shaped one. But what I was given, it's a full double DIN chassis radio that's going to be able to go in. All right. Um, can I ask you a question? Because I, I know that you are deep into bikes. And this is a question I kind of say for you. I asked the other guest. You know, what advice do you have for dealers to want to get into motorcycle? You know, with Metra, this you're showing one item, but we know behind you there's a ton, a big catalog when it comes to motorcycle. You know, whether whether it's uh, LED kits or, or saddle tramp accessories or integration, right? Uh, of course, we don't have time to go through the whole thing. But my question to you is, is is a demo bike worth investing in or, or are you better off getting some type of display? Yeah, I think... I think shops are at a different, you know, everyone's at a different place, either financially or where they want to grow with the shop. So I think if, if somebody could afford a full demo bike, I don't think you can go wrong there because you can show your full ability and what you, your shop can do customize to show your customers what you can offer them. Um, but it's not necessarily an absolute thing to have to have. Um, something that we've done here recently is uh, a frame displays that we have. We have two motorcycle a frame displays, so maybe you're not quite ready to commit and throw in all that money on a side of bike inside of your showroom. You can come to us and see about getting one of the a frame displays that has a little bit of a sample of the different products that we offer. It's got lighting on there. It's going to have some speaker pods on there as well, but it kind of gives your customers a glimpse into what you could offer them without having to have a full motorcycle inside your showroom. Yeah, and it's probably a lot more um, cost effective, like you had mentioned too. You know, putting a whole bike, unless of course you have a bike, that would be a great idea to do it. But if not, you know, a, the, the display could be a really great opportunity. Um, right. Yeah, I did. Last one. Last one. Way, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, if you can't afford the bike, you go with it. I said go for it. Um, there's nothing that says better than if you have one inside your showroom and you display that. If not, I think the A-frame displays are an excellent choice. Very, very cool. And there they are. So there you see it. Pretty Perfect. easy A-frame, as, as uh, he had mentioned. Um, yeah. And then you know what? It totally looks different from like your regular soundboard, too. You know what I mean? It, it yeah, doesn't look like just a regular soundboard. Right, absolutely. We kind of use this A-frame display for some of our other lighting options, which I think looks really great because you're right, it kind of stands out. It's not your typical soundboard or just a wall in front of you. This is a standalone display. It's easy to move. If you want to move it, you just you know, punch right into a wall. And so if you want to change it up, move it around and show it, make it feature closer for a motorcycle season, I think it's a nice little choice. All right, very cool. Last but not least, I can't let you go without giving you your personal touch and advice to dealers who might be tuning in, seeing, wow, I didn't even know, you know, Metro was in this game. I'm already a Metro dealer, maybe. What what can you say to them to influence their decision to pull the trigger on getting involved? Yeah, as far as being a, a dealer with us, it's, I mean, we make it so easy to get involved. You know, we're the I think it's part of the reason why we offer so many different products and brands uh, through the lighting, through the motorcycle brands. We're branching out, we're trying to show people that we offer other things that you can get while you're already dealing with this. So while you're getting your classics, your hardware, you can get lighting, you can get motorcycle accessories. We really want to make it accessible to everyone that you can get extra things that you guys can make money on. And you started to touch on it with us here, but I mean, there's so much money inside of these side markets, and they're growing. It's the side-by-side -side markets growing, the motorcycle markets growing, the cheap markets growing. These are just different areas where people absolutely just throw money at this, at these different markets. People, it's like a, it's a hobby, but at the same time, it's where people want to spend any extra dollars that they have. They just want to throw it at their toys, and I think this is a perfect example where you can take something and give the customer exactly what they want or what they're looking. Yeah, and if you guys keep coming up with crazy cool products like the one you have in front of you, it just 
it's more stuff to put more smiles on people's faces and take their money because they love love having it. So, good job. Yeah, I've used a couple different shows, uh, especially in the deep park as well, motorcycle included with bikers down here. But it's almost like it's crazy how these people walk around at these shows and events and they're walking around with cash in their hands. It's like a bank envelope. They walk around and they're that willing to let their money go towards these side hobbies. <laughs> yeah, they're ready to give it to you. You just have to have something that's cool. You guide them because you're the professional, you're the expert. You just guide them in the right direction and they're going to Awesome. Two thumbs up, man. Thank you for being with us. Hey, if you're watching this, Metro is showing just one really cool piece. In Canada, you want to make sure you get a hold of Gatlin. Um, they're distributed through multiple distribution networks throughout Canada. But uh, definitely encourage you to check that out. And again, I had mentioned, you know, we had Metro as the brand. But make sure you check out Saddle Tramp. Make sure you check out their Heist LED lineup for RGB uh, lighting solutions for um, Harley David. Well, actually, all motorcycle applications, of course. All right. Last but certainly not least is another brand which takes motorcycle very, very seriously. And not only do they take motorcycle very seriously, might I say they take these webcasts uber seriously. You know, we're here, we here at CMA are constantly trying to push the envelope, trying to make it a better infotaining experience. But really, we're just trying to play catch up against these guys. I like to uh, invite them at this time. We're talking about Kicker Audio. If you're a Canadian dealer, make sure you connect with Gem Sen. Their Canadian distributor we've got coming on the show, um, you know, of course, Kip Litzy, who is the associate marketing director for Kicker, who's been on many times, and a new guest, Mr. Joe Gross, who's their power sports director, and of course, they're coming to us from Unmasked Studios. What's going on, fellas? Hello, everyone. This is Kip, your host for Kicker Unmasked Live Weekly. We are joining you on CMA Live. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. I am the host of Kicker Unmasked Live. It's my pleasure to introduce you to the Kicker Unmasked Live Weekly Studios. We got a lot of information we'd like to pack in here tonight. We are serious about two-wheel sports, and there's no one, anyone, who's any better at talking about what we have to offer, to offer than our own Joe Gross, and he's agreed to come in. He uh, actually had dinner with us tonight. So with all that said, this is Joe Gross. And uh, Joe, what's your title? Because I can't. It's, it's like 74 syllables long. Yeah, I, I do. I'm responsible for our automotive OEM and power sports division for both sales and product line development. So uh, I wear lots of hats around here. <laughs> Joe does wear a lot of hats, but the cool thing about Joe is he's an audiophile from the Wayback Machine. I mean, he was in the days of NACA and CAN on ASCA competitions, and he has a hands-on relationship, not just with the relationships with who we make products for, but he has a hands-on relationship with the products. And uh, there's not many other people in this building that fall beneath Steve Irby that I respect when it comes to making making something sound good, and Joe definitely fits in that camp. So thank you for joining us tonight, Joe. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> what we've put together tonight, Ben, is kind of a real quick run through. We've kind of broken into four categories, and the first category I'd like Joe to kind of explain is we kind of call it our DIY product. It's for the guy that has a bike. It may not have bag lids. He may not have a fairing to do anything with, but he still wants to get some great audio on his bike and enjoy it. So, Joe, we've got it on display here. Pick where you'd like to start and tell me what you'd like to go through. We'd like to start talking about a little bit about components for the customer. Custom builder. Uh, not everybody rides a Harley. Uh, some people have, you know, crotch rockets. Some people have little dirt bikes. Some people ride four by, uh, side by sides, four wheelers, you name it, but they still want tunes. For that reason, we developed a PS3, which is a, available in a two ohm and four ohm in chrome and black. Uh, they're cast metal brackets so that they don't break off when you hit a tree limb or you for, Goodness sakes, you bump your bike. Uh, a lot of the little pods that are out there, they break. These are cast mounting bases. They work in, on seven eighths, one inch, and one and a quarter inch bars so that you have a multitude of fitment applications. And again, in two and four ohm and chrome and black. Uh, amplifiers. Uh, not every motorcycle, not every application for power sports has a head unit. They don't necessarily come with a fairing. Absolutely. So for that reason, we have the PXI BT 100.2, which is 50 watts by two with its own waterproof controller, IP66 controlled. Uh, the, amp the amplifier is two ohm stable. It's a really nice, tight, compact piece that allows for Bluetooth, full USB for USB stick for music, and eighth inch jack if for the different applications. Uh, the next thing that you want to be able to do is maybe add amplifiers for a much bigger application or our speaker system, our PX amplifier lines, full IP66, very compact, very efficient. Now, when we talk about efficiency, 
want to talk about speakers, not just amplifiers, but, you know, efficiencies, amplifiers in the old days, AB, push-pull amplifiers were maybe 50% efficient, so you lost half of your current and battery power and heat. Well, these old full-range Class D amplifiers are unbelievably efficient in excess of 80, 85% efficient, very small, very compact, and everything we do is in true RMS ratings. Uh, we do no ILS. Nothing is going to be packaged that says 1,000 watts. Uh, this is this particular amplifier is 75 by 4 into 2 ohm, very stable, very clean, very small, and very compact. And about the size of my Galaxy S10 Plus cell phone. Yes, but when we talk about efficiency, it's not just about amplifiers and current draw, because we know that none of these, I don't care if it's 150cc side-by-side -side or a you know 103 cubic inch Harley or some of the new bad boy CBOs, they still have a 35 amp charging system. Wow. Boy, that takes me back to the old days of car audio when you had, uh, let's see, you put all these amplifiers in there and it would suck the battery through the power wire and spit it out the speaker. Uh, yeah, power is not your friend when it comes to watts on a motorcycle. So what we done, have done is we've developed a full line of speakers. The target, and if we all remember the basic math, if you want to gain 3 dB of output, which is the just noticeable difference of loudness, you have to double your power. Well, when you have a 35 amp charging system and a very small battery, even if you want to go to spend the money on lithium, you still have limited amounts of current. So the target when we set forth on these speakers is I gave our engineering group a specification of a frequency response curve that would make most people in Iaska vomit. <laughs> they have a lot of output so they can overcome all the road noise that you get on a bike. And, and Joe, when you talk about efficiency numbers, a, a typical speaker is 88, 89 dB sensitivity? Exactly. What are these? The challenge that I gave our engineering team is I wanted 93 dB sensitivity. 93 dB. That means that if we put 75 watts into this speaker, we literally can get the same output of a speaker that only has 90 dB sensitivity with 150 watts because power current draw is not your friend. So we take the, a frequency response curve that is designed for a motorcycle, super high-end materials, very strong, very lightweight, and to really exaggerate, the, especially the mid-range and high frequencies, to cut through a 70, 75 mile per hour wind noise, which of course I would never exceed the speed limit on my bike, but I've heard that you can still hear these well over 100 miles an hour. I've heard. You absolutely can. So <laughs> basically what you see here, Ben, is we have a full line of components for the DIY guy who wants to put together his own system. They're very small on the amplifier side, very efficient, and the speaker efficiency as well lets you get very loud while you can't get a lot of power because you're dealing with the small charging system on a bike. And as you can see, I had our camera guy, Tim, go back there. We actually have a custom Harley that's here in the studio tonight. And that's actually Jeremy Wynn. Of course, you've seen him on the show. He's one of the guys that sits in the back mm -hmm. and helps us for production. He's actually out on the road right now for an event, but that's his personal bike. And it has the full system made up of these products that you see right here. Yeah. So this is for the DIY guy, the guy who wants to build something on his own bike, who doesn't have a fairing, he doesn't have bag lids, but he's trying to get some great sound on his bike. But what we have done is we've taken these efficient components and we've created these Harley Davidson kits that covers a very wide range of years and product categories. And I'm gonna let Joe walk you through those because if you got an HD, a Harley, we've got a kit that is truly plug and play, ready to go. Yeah. What we literally have for you set up is from 1996 through 2021. We just got through validating the 2021 uh, product. Uh, but uh, today I wanna basically focus on our 14 and up street glide and road glide because those are the most popular in the market. So what we did, we started with these incredibly efficient 93 dB sensitivity speakers. We created some very, very cool grills that are E-coated and powder coated that are form fit with a perfect fitment for the bike. Created an amplifier mounting bracket, one of the super efficient 300 watt amplifiers, 75 by four. And even if you're, when you're doing a front stage kit, you still get a four channel amplifier because we're rear speaker ready. Then we create a true plug and play harness. These harnesses come through our automotive OEM division. We know how to make harnesses for the vehicles. So everything is shrink wrapped, the whole nine yards, the perfect fitment, waterproof, direct plug and play connections. And when I say plug and play, everything is truly plug and play. So bracket, amplifier, grills, road glide, street glide, set of speakers, and you are truly ready to do your install. Power and ground back to the battery. 
And then last but not least, you'll see this little plug right here. This is actually a resistive load so that the amplifier, if it doesn't have rear speakers, the amplifier is fully protected sitting there waiting for when that customer gets ready to add them. This piece can be unplugged. So if they have a tour pack, comes with its harness, this plugs right into this plug. You mount these speakers in the tour pack mounting pods and you're now ready to go, or ready to flash the bike to become ready for the audio system. Last but not least, if you don't have a tour pack, lots of people like to put speakers in their bags. Now, mm -hmm. bag speaker lids have been a challenge for the industry for a long time. Factory Harley lids are a five by seven, and we have a solution that will be out very, very shortly that will be a direct replacement for that that will be one of the best performance five by sevens ever made. I just got through doing the listening test with Mr. Irby, the magic man behind the almost 50 year history of Kicker. Uh, we worked very hard on these, but in the lids, if you don't want a five by seven, we've got a solution. We started with an audio solution in mind from an engineering standpoint at first. First of all, the materials needed to be an ABS-C material, very high temperature capable. They don't soften or bend or break or get brittle in the wintertime. And we created a mounting space that allows the speaker to drop in from the top. Why oh. the top? Because we have a mounting ga a gasket all the way around the back of the speaker that allows it to drop into the top of the lid to get a perfect watertight seal. Our PS69 two ohms come with the kit, with the lids, or if you've got your own favorite brand of speakers, you can get the lids by themselves. But what makes these lids special besides the fact that they fit perfectly and it's a top mounted six by nine, you go, well, I need more than that. Well, these things are designed acoustically to work. We know that you hang a, a heavy speaker on a piece of plastic that the plastic will start to deform and kind of change its shape over time. So we tied in a metal bracket to tie the two sides of the lid together so that it will not move thus making it very rigid. And for some of you woofer guys, we talk about Q loss in a woofer box. If the woofer box is breathing, you're losing bass. Well, if this lid is flexing, not only is it rattling, but it also can reduce the amount of bass output out of the six by nine. Thus, top mount, inner braced, reuses the factory latches, ABSC run on a 1200 ton injection molding machine so they literally can be scuffed and painted ready to go. And then of course, the most common color, vivid black, they're available on the shelf ready to ship today. Wow. And if, if we go, I mean, we shoot here, over, we got Tim, our camera. Yeah, go ahead, Ben. I, I have to give you kudos on this one. I had, you know, I don't want to interrupt your presentation, but the fit and finish of that piece right there, and you know, Joe just mentioned about the, the the gloss paint, and of course, you can customize the paint. But the fact that their top drop in makes it very unique, and their rear bracing, I think, ties the whole rigidity thing all together. So re I just wanted to say good job on that. Well, thanks for recognizing that. And that is one of the issues. I mean, we are kicker. And, you know, even though we've been doing this stuff since 1973, when we got into the power sports category, we're just taking what we know, which is how to make great sounding, durable products. And how do we make that available for a two wheel sports enthusiast? And as you can see, we've got a very broad range of products and our bag lids. I think Joe will even go out in this limb. I'll give him a little toot. I'll put him up against anything that's out there, and there's nothing that's built better, that's designed to take paint right out of the box better, and is going to be more rigid. I mean, when we first showed these two, there's just a pair of six by nines when you do the bag lids. I remember being at a show with Joe, and I actually had a guy who was confrontational. He kept asking, where's the subwoofer? Where's the subwoofer? And I said, there's no subwoofer. I said, it's a pair of six by nines. And he said, well, I want you to open the bag lids. I want to see. And I was like, well, it's not my bike. And if you know Harley people, you don't touch their bike. You leave it alone. Mm. I said, Joe over there and as soon as he's done presenting to another guy he will come show you the inside of his harley's bag lids and when joe came over and opened the lids the guy was just dumbfounded he couldn't believe that it was getting that much solid base out of just a pair of six by nines and a bag lid so that's a cool uh, story i like to, to share an example i mean we are uh, we all know in the industry the bike world is a really small tight-knit family even though it's a huge segment and growing but the uh, the folks from legend suspension the folks from clockworks uh even dave perowitz uh when they get ready for products they they hit us up for the audio kits for our bag lids because they are so easy to paint because the fit the finish and they do not leak <laughs> that's a huge thing 
And and the other thing that Joe didn't touch on, which I remember from his training on it, is because it's a top mount and we're not undermounting the speakers, there's two huge benefits. Number one, you're not creating this big gulp funnel cup that holds all the rain that a bike might encounter. So the water will just literally run out. There's actually an integrated drain hole. And if it does get some moisture in there, you just turn the system on, the speaker will pop it out and keep on playing, which is fantastic for that. And the other thing I was, oh, the undermount is oh. the nubs. You're mounting from the top, you have all that weight, and so now it's supported on a solid surface where all these undermount designs, you're asking a threaded insert into plastic to hold that speaker bouncing like this on a bike going down the road. Harleys don't vibrate. Not none. I've never <laughs> ridden on a Harley that doesn't vibrate, I think is the correct answer. But the fact of the matter is, it's that kind of engineering and thought process that went into designing these bag lids, and I will go out on a limb and be very comfortable there. We have the best bag lid solution that's on the market, period. Yes, uh, we do have the PS six ninety twos that come with those are pretty amazing. We have some surprises coming uh, in uh, late summer, early fall uh, for both the fairing and the uh, the bag lids that will be uh, I don't know by ampable, but uh, I didn't say that out loud. Oh, <laughs> oh, Joe's leaking secrets okay. like a sieve. Is he me? <laughs> I'm just letting him talk. I like Joe. Joe should come back more often. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something, you know, and I know we're trying to stay within the time clock here, Ben, and we sure appreciate you, uh, you know, putting up with us. But one of the other things that, that makes a Harley system sound great when you do the upgrade, I mean, it's wonderful that we have these plug and play kits, the wires the right length, it has the right harnesses, it, everything's there that you need. But the most important thing is if you don't program the bike's radio to sound good, it doesn't sound good at all. And I want Joe just to touch on this briefly, and it is the HD programmer. And if I remember Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, but we actually worked with a company and we pioneered this. I know some other people have now come out with the kind of following our footsteps, but this was something that we championed. Yeah, more than six years ago, uh, when the Rushmore series bikes came out and hit the market, uh, the installers everywhere started calling going, oh my God, what do we do? No matter what we put on this stuff, it sounds like a blank fill in the blank. Uh, the reality was is 16 volts coming out of the head unit. The equalization was optimized by the manufacturer of the head unit. And now in starting in 2014, everything on the vehicle is CAN bus. Well, my automotive background, I went, ooh, CAN bus, cool. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. I found a little company up in Detroit, started working with them. And we spent about three and a half months and cracked the code, so to speak. Uh, we developed a flash programmer uh, that is available as a single use uh, for the consumer, the do-it-yourselfer, or that programmer can, can be converted through techno research. You pick up the phone, you call as the dealer, and you can have that converted to flash as many bikes as you want to. The net result is you plug in an hour unique configuration, and other companies are now using this as well, but it allows you to select, I'm doing a two-speaker system in the front. I'm going to make a four-speaker system out of a two-speaker bike, and our flash program actually enables the fader control in the radio that is not mm. active from the factory. It turns on the rear outputs of the 6.5, the, the standard base radio, the Boom 6.5, or the new GTS actually turns on those outputs which are, which are not active from the factory. It re-equalizes everything. And then in a second screen, we through the instructions, very intuitive, we tell you to go in and enable amp one, which basically tells the head unit you're using an amplifier for front, and it changes the voltage output of the radio from 16 down to six volts, which optimizes it for the input of our amplifiers. And then obviously you can enable amp two and your fader, and now you have a true four channel system with full fade capabilities with an equalization that is designed for a motorcycle, for the speakers we designed for a motorcycle, for the amplifiers we designed for a motorcycle. Wow, it's kind of a repetitive thing, but- It um, is, and more importantly, it works up through 2021 now. Yes, we have done the full validation. And for the folks out there that have tried to go into a 21 and you discovered that the uh, ooh, the diagnostic port plug changed, uh, we do have the 21 cables in stock and ready to ship. I have nothing to ask, Joe. You've already thought about everything. <laughs> well, if you, if you have some questions, we're all open. You can yes, hit us with anything. Absolutely. I do, I do, have, anything, one ben, I do have one question. I do have a question. Um, listen, you guys have done an incredible job with, with motorcycle. I, I can literally feel Joe's passion coming through the screen 
from that from your kicker studio into into my like I just feel it. So I do appreciate that. And I'm sure those who are watching appreciate it as well. There's no question that kicker's done in a, 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 an extensive amount of homework to come out with the offering that you have. Um, I want to kind of tap into that knowledge um, that you guys have in this market, Joe. I'm going to direct this to Joe. What advice would you have for shops looking at this episode? You've seen their, all the presentations, and they're like, wow, I did not know that the motorcycle thing was this big. What advice do you have for them? You know, the simple reality is is that we've all, we, the, the, in the early car audio, we used to put boxes on a table and say, hey, trust me, this sounds good. And the audio retailer figured out that they had to have a sound room because you have to have an experience. And then the bigger dealers and the better dealers out there actually started building cars. And when you put somebody's behind in the seat and you let them experience this, because trying to explain to someone how something sounds versus letting them experience the sound and honestly if you'll put a system on a bike and if you can't afford a bike at least put one in the sound room so they can hear it somehow or another be able to demonstrate the product now we do events uh, across the country this last year we have been uh, literally chained to our desk and not allowed to leave uh, but and we had just gotten started with the events when we rolled all this product out uh, through the drag specialties network uh, and and Jeremy and I actually went to a couple of different events and it was ironic we were setting up the tents uh, to do this event in a parking lot for a dealer and before we could get the first tent out of the bag I sold four motorcycle systems because one, they recognized the kicker brand. Two, I had my bike, personal bike sitting there and I demoed it for them and they were pulling wallets and cash out and saying, can I be first? Wow. The ability to demonstrate the product, but also don't be scared. We've been doing car audio competitions for years. We've been doing events. We bring in cool cars that bring in cool people and they love to see and touch and feel and smell and feel. Bike people are the exact same way. They want to experience it. If you can put together a demo, that is the key. If you can do an event and invite people, which are better dealers out there, have an extensive customer base, invite them in, show them what's cool and new for today. And, and more importantly, Ben, I want to tie into that. You know, obviously we're here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. We are a global company. Of course, we sell all across the world in different countries. And I have to give a shout out to Jemson, and that's Jemson, not Jensen, uh, G-E-M-S-E-N. They are our Canadian partner. They are our distributor for everyone north of the border up there in Canada. So I have to give props to them. If you have any interest in any of these kicker products that you've experienced, if you have questions, please reach out to Jemson. They'd love to answer your questions and get you on board so you can find out how you can bring all these fantastic kicker two-wheel products into your environment and you can demo it for your customers and make lots of fantastic sales that's great advice coming from the people who know uh guys i can't thank you enough amazing presentation as usual certainly didn't disappoint uh thank you for coming on i re really look forward to having you on again very shortly guys thank you so much it's our pleasure ben thank you for the time thanks for having us all right, there you go. You heard Kip say it. Gem Sen in Canada, if you're looking to get involved and become a kicker dealer, that's who you want to call. What a fantastic show tonight, guys. A big thanks to all of our guests this evening who brought a wealth of knowledge, showed off goodies, and really the whole point of the whole this whole episode and a couple and the uh, uh, you know the next few episodes really is to give a um, a peek or a taste of what is available out there. You know, we're all about knowledge we're all about you know education but a lot of it has to do with being aware of what's available and what are you going to do as a dealer to activate that and make the most of it we've given you you know the information we've given you all the numbers and and brands that you can look into and who you need to call but you got to you know look at yourselves look at your team and say yeah this is something we got to get into and for sure or from where i'm sitting motorcycle is definitely something if you're not already in you're certainly missing out um Hey, listen, I got to remind you a couple key messages. I want to remind you to tune in to CMA Connected every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I get to sit down with one brand, go deep. Lunchtime learning session is what I call it. And that's Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Of course, the other big thing, if you missed it two weeks ago, or maybe it was two and a half weeks ago now, uh, we did this whole industry week thing. We've got over 100 hours of 12-volt mobile electronics content that we've produced all the brands pitched in, everybody put a big effort. It is now available to watch on demand. No more excuses, 
get onto CanadianMobileAudio.com, go to Industry Week, and make sure you watch some of those critical brands that have great new products, great information for you to make the best choices for you to succeed this season. Only two weeks away from our next CMA Live, we went to the next is going to be all about power sports. You heard a lot of guys talk about power sports kind of blended in. Well, motorcycle, we did marine, we did motorcycle. Now it's going to be all about the power sports. We've got some of the biggest brands in the category, of course, joining us as well. And that's it. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is CMA Live presented by Sirius XM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect. There's never been a better time to have Sirius XM with even more exclusive content, like over 140 channels in your vehicle, including the widest, deepest variety of music, ad-free. Root for your team. Get news. Listen to whatever makes you laugh. And hear all about your favorite stars. Your all-access trial includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free, personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels filled with music and enjoy a favorite shows with Sirius XM Video. Thousands of hours of shows and performances on demand. What you love is on now.